Welcome. Ooh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Spec and Tech number 13. A big applause. Okay, tonight I won't have my mate uh, Julia as a, a co-presenter because we only have one microphone due to another e event uh, from Impact Hub. So we'll briefly start presenting you tonight. And first of all, number 13. And this time we wanted to have uh, an overview of our community to let you present what you're working on, the project you're working at, what you're passionate about. And so we decided to give a call and to let you uh, discuss and introduce us to you, your presentation, your work, and the job you've done so far. First of all, a very brief recap I won't be as long as last time, but uh, every time we see so many faces. So from this year, we are finally an association, which means that uh, we have uh, a very legal structure. We have no problem in case something happens in this room. We have to pay some legal cost, of course, but in return, we are totally fine also to have partnership with uh, companies or with uh, external bodies, with the government, with the province, and so on. So, uh, a couple of things just before starting, so pay attention. Thank you. So, one, do you have to donate? No, it's on a freely basis, but you're more than welcome. And even if you donate one single cent, you will get an awesome sticker from our uh, new sponsors that we'll present later. Michele sitting there will uh, get all the donations tonight and then he will start uh, uh, handling. Yeah. yeah, since we just gave another applause, I would say to do another applause, but even bigger for all the people that start in helping us tonight. We saw. Uh, a lot of people that were passing by and just say, okay, what can I do? Uh, how can I help you? And that is very, very important for our community because everyone here has a job or has to study exams uh, and seeing, uh, I don't know, 70, 80 people uh, in the middle of June, it's a very highly impressive result. So a big applause for everyone. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, a big applause to Lorenzo for helping us with the seats. <laughs> Okay, second, why do we want your money? As we said, we have some fixed costs. Just for being an association, we need to pay 1,000 euros, uh, euros per year, just for the legal cost, for having uh, someone taking care of the expenses, of the incomes, of the outcomes, and the stuff, and to get, uh, we'll get your money in a way to repay this. But of course, due to being a legal association, we cannot keep that money, of course. So everything will be presented at the end of the year. Everything that uh, we pass through, all the expenses of the incomes uh, will be presented uh, at the beginning of next year. Why do we want your, uh, your data? It's very important. We always ask for your fiscal code, uh, Codex Fiscale. And that's because uh, being a legal association, we need to register every money that comes into the association and all the money that goes out. And uh, Italy is a very bureaucratic uh, country, so we need to write down everything, where you live, uh, what's your fiscal code, and the uh, number of things. But, uh, I mean, it takes nothing, and once you register, you will be for all the events uh, of the year. And finally, when you can donate, anytime. Uh, now we have Michele, and other people probably taking care of the donations, so just pass by. You can also pay along the week. We have, uh, um, uh, what do you call that? Like a partita IVA, so you can just uh, make a donation at any time via a bank account. Okay. Boring stuff gone. Oh uh, yeah, you got uh, a receipt. Every payment you do, also one cent, we will give you us an electronic receipt, perfectly on your smartphone. Okay, our sponsors. Finally, uh, really fast. Julian introducing. All right. Yes. Okay. So uh, as always, big thanks to Impactau, which is the place where we are. Probably a lot of you already have heard this stuff. So basically, it's a co-working space. So if you need a co-working space, you can get a place in Impactau. Then, Becca, which is my company, we are heavily sponsoring the event, so I just want to thank ourselves in front of you, sorry, very mean. And then, <laughs> I hate the digital, as always, they are very supportive with the event, uh, and there is always some event written now, which I have no idea, so please fans help me. Yeah, it's uh, an event happening next week, uh, also for all the, we see an, an incredible number of women. A big applause for the women tonight. <laughs> We are really happy because one of the outcomes of uh, Spec and Tech is also to promote uh, gender equality and uh, women in uh, technology and uh, in the in aspect and in sector that usually are referred to men. 
So uh, there's an event with a CEO from uh, iCare, which is a startup, and it's called uh, Julia Pacarin. And she will be in Povo on the 21st of June. You can follow uh, the channel of Spec and Tech, and we will give you more information along the week. So I hope there is probably a video. Oh, yes. And then Segata, as always, providing spec for everyone, which is awesome because they are giving us huge discounts. Thank you, Segata, because otherwise we have to make a pay you a ticket, which is like very expensive. And uh, yeah, as always, we will have some snacks and stuff at the end of the uh, very interesting and uh, tasty talks. Uh, yeah, and then Diginate, uh, yeah, we are all sponsored, but I promise we are starting the talks in like a second. And they, are, uh, they gave us the, the stickers that you can find at the entrance near Mikena, the guy we just told Four, and uh, for uh, like a very small donation, you can have a sticker and a um, selfie paint on it. All right, <laughs> these the uh, stickers. Okay, back to France, which knows what it's saying. Okay, uh, what just wanted to go back. Uh, we really need to thank these guys. Uh, they make uh, awesome spe uh, stickers, and uh, they are supporting our events. Uh, so they will become our uh, uh, not sponsor, something like bigger pa patrons. They, they they became our patrons. Uh, so every once in a while they will produce some stickers just for us. And so if you have crazy ideas like making a spec and tech for the winter, or a spec and tech for the summer, or a spec and tech about uh, Game of Thrones, uh, you can tell us that we can think about uh, the next edition of the speakers, uh, of the stickers. Um, uh, yeah, uh, this is our website, specand.tech, and you can find all the previous issues and whatever you may need. And uh, you can leave a, re a review on Facebook, you don't know it maybe, but you can leave a review so saying uh, five stars out of star and five, these guys are awesome. Uh, and that's really appreciated from us, and of course we will reply and say you're beautiful as well. <laughs> okay, uh, I would say that it's the beginning of the night, it's going to be extremely interesting because we have six uh, people tonight talking, not just two, so it's a very big improvement. We give them seven minutes uh, to present what they're doing and the research they've done or the project they're working at. And after these uh, minutes, we will have a two, three minutes uh, Q&A, so you can ask uh, whatever you're interested in. But don't ask all the questions because there's going to be a very long and extensive um, networking part after the, the sixth talk. We will have a, br uh, um, a break in the middle where we can just go to a toilet or drink a couple of beers. And then at the end, we will stay here and uh, eat and drink for all the night. So, first uh, group of stuff. Yeah. yeah, just one thing. Sorry, Francesco, I didn't. Uh, Avisato. Or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, just one thing. Uh, tonight, uh, we basically didn't organize anything but the logistics, which is awesome. Please keep contributing with the talk. I mean, this is not like, uh, okay, we gave you the enough space to talk about stuff. Like, if you have stuff that you care about, that you're studying or working on, and you think that it's awesome and you want to communicate, please do, because this is not like me and Francesco doing stuff. It's like everyone doing stuff, which is awesomer. So please do. Thank you. Let's go. With the first guy. No, he's really, he's really, uh, really right. Just uh, send us stuff, guys. We will probably uh, uh, have a, 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 just a part on our website when you can submit uh, the talks that you would like to give. But really contribute, because it's very important that we have these bottom-up initiatives. So, first speaker of the night, uh, Mike Me. conference and uh, of course you have seen hostesses running from one side to another of the room bringing microphones to sorry I forgot how to do it. Hey. What's going on? Focus the Oh no. No no stava andando. Yeah. Sbaglio sempre tasto anch'io. Of course you have seen hostesses running from one side to another of the room bringing microphones to people that wants to make a speech. And uh, you know, sometimes it's hard for them to identify who rise up is intended first on the public to talk, and uh, they tend to give the microphones to the closer person. So, structures and companies that organize 
uh, events have to manage several stuff, such as questions priority identification. So who rise up is ended first on the public to talk. And um, you know, structures have to pay the personal and the micro politician systems. The market that we are targeting is huge. There are more or less 3,000 conferences center in, um, in Italy that can host more than 500 people per event. And um, you know, structures have to pay at least four hostesses that have, uh, and they have to pay them on average 200 euros per event. So we started thinking to an alternative, me and my friend Julia that tonight is not here, grandmother birthday or something like that. And um, we think it was an alternative that could have been easier, faster and cheaper. That's why we created MikeMe. MikeMe is a platform made to connect people from the audience by using their own smartphones directly to the speakers in the hall. So microphones and hostesses will be not needed anymore. Now my colleague Ivan will explain you how does MikeMe work. So basically, the person has to access my key by going to the web and scanning the barcode. So we shall provide a barcode. So once you get a barcode, you will get access to the system. So my key basically has two components, the web and then the, the server. The server can be installed on a laptop or a cloud. And once you scan, you get the interface, and here we can resolve a call. So resolve the call, and then they'll be logged into the server. So the person who is, let's say, the MC or in charge of the occasion can be can be able to, to view them in order. So to give you access, he just clicks what he sees there, and you get a notification back to your phone. Yeah, so through the, when you get a connect, the notification, you'll be able to talk. You just tap the button, and then through the server, we go to the speakers. And here we have uh, a small demo. Okay, so now imagine that I am a person in the public, and um, you know, I already get the access on the website, thanks to the QR code, so really fast. And um, then I reserve my call uh, to talk, and uh, the server authorized me to talk, so now I will talk from the public and make my question. the possibility also, sorry, people that cannot reach physically the events to take part directly from home, thanks to a remote access. And uh, this is one of the straightness of Mike, that has a few competitors, but we are absolutely the best <laughs> alternative. That's <laughs> because of the remote access and the QR code access. So applications, you know, they are so fast, you have to download them, you will never download an application to make a question during a conference. True? So this is how we want to sell MikeMe. Um, there are two formulas. One is an annual license, and the other one is a, a one-time fee. So for theaters, uh, conferences room, university, impact hub, so on. And um, yeah, we want to implement MikeMe to make it more than a prototype, because we already started a promising collaboration with the Santa Clara Center. So they want to see something truly. So um, they have several structures and uh, they want to test MikeMe because they think that we ca they can really innovate their system thanks to our platform. So this is what we need for financing, but uh, actually we are here to also to recruit it because uh, we, our staff, our team get all the competences need to go far. But we want, uh, we need, uh, you know, more than financing, uh, we need young, and the skill people, maybe some of you, <laughs> who wants to who wants to dream with us, but not only dream to make to make things for real. So, uh, if you want to take part, you are welcome. 
you, you can join us. We are going to take part to several competitions. One is the uh, team, you know, team of telecommunication. And um, yeah, we are going to start a collaboration with the FIT uh, Innovazione Trentina. So, uh, believe in MacMe because uh, we, uh, we think MacMe is the, will be the future of uh, microphonization. Thank you. Awesome. So, people, developers, people interested in uh, developing this thing or helping out with uh, adding. Wait, 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 where are you? Come here. People interested in developing or adding stuff, uh, just uh, contact her in uh, after the event. Anyone with questions here? I don't think I can go too far with uh, this microphone because I don't have mic me, <laughs> but uh, I can try. Anyone? You can pass it. <laughs> Please ask a question now. <laughs> okay, well, can you come closer? <laughs> Have you considered using also text messages? Yeah, that was a. Have you con wait, wait, we repeat for the people watching us on Facebook. Uh, have you considered the. Okay. Have you considered the uh, using text messages and uh, natural language processing? Yeah. We consider uh, we consider text messages, but uh, you know it's already diffused. You can use Twitter and uh, other stuff. So my, the innovation the innovation of Mac is uh, are the voice messages. So uh, text messages is uh, something that we can add, of course. Nothing <coughs> more. <laughs> Please, Julia, say something. Use my. <laughs> Big thank you. Applause. Okay, we have the second one. Someone wearing a nice um, hat. <laughs> uh, Julio, talking about brain computer interfaces. It's funny because it's a topic we've been uh, dreaming for a while and we were like, uh, we want to know about uh, brain computer interfaces and finding no one very skilled at the topic. And then somebody appeared. Uh, so, Julia, your time. Hi everyone, I'm Julio, I'm a master's student at the University of Trento, and I'm now collaborating with the Affiliative Behavior and Psychology Lab in uh, the Department of Psychology, where I work with brain computer interfaces mostly. And today I want to explain you how those devices work and how they can be used for research or for recreation. First of all, I will explain uh, how they work. So, mostly they are based on electroencephalography, which is a technique that allows to read the electrical signal of your brain and to map it uh, in a computer. So, for example, you can map specific brain pattern uh, of activation in different areas of your brain to a specific keystroke on your laptop. The recording is quite easy, and you just need an uh, electrode or a bunch of electrodes displayed all over your scalp and those are used to record the electrical activity. Now, if you put a finger on your head, you won't feel anything, because our brain is not working at 240 volts, but it's working in the range of microvolts, and that's why we need to, to use an amplifier, which is a device that is able to make the signal more readable from a computer, and uh, we need a substance, which usually is a gel, that allows to increase the skin conductance in order to build it by computer, this is our final step in the system. And it's used to record the signal or to do real uh, or live, uh, uh, let's say, machine learning or some other kind of mathematical model that can be used to map the different areas of different systems. BCI are actually an evolution of the classical EEG, are devices that are usually cheaper, smaller, with less electrode, and don't need to use gel, but usually they use water or are just dry electrode. So, for example, this one is based on water. And connected to a computer, you can use it for different scopes. 
The main one is to develop technologies for impaired people, so people, for example, stuck in a bed and that can co communicate with other people or people that are uh, unable to move their hands, for example, or to walk. So the different kinds of application ranges from communication to locomotion to, let's say, in, uh, recreation. For communication, the typical kind of device is a speller, which is a software that maps different brain areas of your brain to specific letters, or to use a paradigm that is able to analyze your brain responses in order to detect a letter. For example, the one that you see here, you don't have any kind of training needed. There is a matrix with row and column. You just need to focus on a specific letter. Row and columns are flashing at a specific interval, and the computer is able to analyze the signal of your brain, the response, in order to detect which letter you were focusing on. So this system allows people, for example, stuck in a bed that can talk to communicate with other people. Another great kind of application are uh, related to locomotion or to processes moving. So imagine you don't have an arm anymore, and you're able to move a prosthesis with the same brain pattern that you were using to move your real arm or your real hand. And similar, you can uh, use your brain areas to move a wheelchair. So if you are stuck on a, a wheelchair and you can't move because that, even your arms are paralyzed, you are still able to move alone and you don't need anyone else to help you in moving and do your, your daily stuff. Now, recently, there is a, another great range of applications that are focused on uh, the detection of your mental state. So, easily, if I'm talking in front of a crowd of people, that, for example, I can monitor my own relaxation and my own engagement as well is uh, if you were able to wear a cap each, uh, I can monitor each one of your relaxation, engagement and focus, and I can modify my presentation according to your mental state. So if I see someone else is more engaged than other, I can focus on why they are not engaged, if I'm wrong, if the argument is not interesting, or if I can explain a different topic in uh, another way that is more engaging for the people that I have in front of. Imagine using this kind of system in a school environment, you can enhance the quality of teaching. Finally, I'd like to focus on other applications, other form of applications that are related to recreation. So, as I said, you can map specific areas of your brain to specific action, and as well as I, I can assign each area and each pattern to a virtual object, as you see the girl on the left. She's moving a, an object, a virtual object just uh, with patterns of her brain. She's able to, for example, move with the left, right, uh, or other kind of stuff. Or to real object, and this is the example on the right. This is a picture from the first uh, brain drone control competition. This is the University of California, and they are using this very headset to control a drone. And they were able to participate in an interesting kind of competition where you don't need to move your finger or move your uh, arm, for example, to control an object, such a drone, but you just use your brain. Finally, this is an example, a good example. Uh, there was, a, in this day on Reddit, an interesting topic of a mother which, whose son is stuck on a bed, he can't talk properly, he can't move. So she was looking for a board game that his son can play and uh, that uh, she can help playing because he can keep uh, cards in his hand, for example, and he can communicate properly. So she was looking for a strategic board game which. Uh, where you need no cards uh, for yourself, but are just public stuff, and other kind of stuff. Now imagine this guy playing a video game, okay, it's not clear. but the girl here is playing Super Mario, which is a brain pattern, so specific action of the brain are mapped to specific action of the character, and in this case, the impaired people are able to actually play a video game without using hands, arm, or movement, or without talking, but just with uh, the talk. Okay. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, or if you want to give the device a try, So actually, we have a second mic. Better with just uh, so if any of you have questions, I put in the time for two minutes, so please do. So it, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, really cool talk. 
so it, it's highly personalized. This, so you have to register the brain, like brain waves from a single person in order to use it. Is up to the parallel. So, for example, the speller, where you have to see letters, you don't need any kind of training because there is a specific response in your brain for a different actions. So, for example, if you're looking at a face, there is a specific action after 170 milliseconds. While for the video game, yes, it's very specific to the training based, based on uh, your thoughts and your brain because different areas are not usually the same. Every person are close, but not the same. The activation is different. Also, you have different kind of activation if your eyes are open or closed, if you are stepping uh, or sit down, or if you're moving, for example. So in that case, you need a specific training. And uh, even for the video game, you, just, you have two movements. It may take a couple hours of training before really doing it. What about, okay. what about uh, paralyzed people? No. <laughs> what about paralyzed people? Because if I have to train uh, the device to walk, for example, that I cannot walk, I don't really see that. In that case, you can associate any kind of action. For example, the girl playing Super Mario was not thinking of moving uh, left or jump, but she was thinking of moving uh, a specific, uh, uh, I, I don't remember, but I think it was left arm and uh, right foot or vice versa. But you can, for example, make specific uh, visual ideas or motory tasks. You can imagine to rotate a cube in your brain specific area and activate it. So it's not needed to imagine to move a real hand or a real leg, but it can be anything. It's Okay, thank you. We will host a drone competition flying with Java Rain next evening. Big applause! Thank you. Thank you. And as you said, he's very willing to let you try this thing later. So, okay, final talk before the, um, before the, um, the break. And we were talking about drones, and now we actually have drones. So we have uh, flying scarecrows, or oh, flying scarecrows. Please, come on. Scarecrows, and yeah, tonight I want to introduce you Lino. Lino is a farmer and he cultivates corn in Veneto near Verona. Last year he lost up the 20% of his harvest due to birds attacks. Like him, many other farmers are facing the same problem, but we have the solution for them. We developed a drone, automatic both in flight and recharge, which is able to scare birds away through the use of acoustic repellers. In order to control it, we also developed an application. Well, uh, this is a web application which doesn't need any access to the internet. Through the application, the farmer is able to set the waypoints which will be covered by the drone. And during every mission, the drone will fly, will fly over the, the waypoint in a random manner. This is because um, thanks to that, I mean, uh, the drop, the, the birth, will never get used to the drone because they tend to get, they tend to get used to run, uh, recurrent partner, partners. At the, end of our, uh, or the, at the end of every mission, the drone will fly back home and lands on its base station. To do the landing, we need an extremely high precision. Indeed, this is the most critical part of our application. As you can see from the picture here, we developed an algorithm based on visual recognition because the precision of GPS is not enough to land on a very narrow area like the ones of the base station. So we are switching the, um, the guide of the drone from the GPS one to the, um, to the image recognition. We developed this algorithm based on the computer vision which adapts its uh, range and thresholds based on the height of the drone. So basically, summing up, 
we are developing and well, we are almost done with the development of, a, the, of the web application which permits the control of the drone and with the drone itself. Well, we started with a Parrot, a Bebop 2. Um, we customized it, uh, making it intelligent and able to be recharged autom autonomously. And then uh, we also built the prototype of the base station. So at the dawn of our idea, at the dawn of our project, this was the team, and the team was composed by four members, and they are all students of the EIT Digital Master School, but during Startup Lab, uh, we realized that it wasn't enough. We, we definitely needed someone which, who was able to, um, to compensate our lacks in the business side. So we, okay. we found uh, Egle and Nicoletta, two students of business and economics and business, and um, they, they are extremely motivated and um, believe. And so this is our team and we, we really think that um, what made the difference for us during our path is that uh, having such an interdisciplinary team is extremely important because it gives, uh, because, uh, gives you um, a colorful point of views and thanks to that uh, we were able to, 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 real, uh, to understand and realize the importance of the business aspect. Indeed, for a digital startup, it's extremely important to have also a very nice background in, in the economics because it helps you following the, the right path, ex um, especially at the beginning when you enter the market. So what we learned at the end of Startup Lab is that uh, the, having the possibility of working in a, in a space like the Collocation Center, or, uh, also thank, thanks to the EIT Digital, and the, um, the Contamination Lab uh, here in down, downtown in Trento, uh, gives you the opportunity of working in, a, in an extremely stimulant uh, environment and uh, where, where you can work together with other people and having mentorships and stuff that will become extremely useful in your future as a startup. So, just don't be scared. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, uh, questions for Plain Scare Pros. Remember, they will go to Virginia Tech and they will Break the asses. So, uh, any question that may be really try. hard, just uh, ask it now because they will find it later. Uh, is this thing uh, legal? Because I know that uh, there are quite uh, strict re regulations for flying quadcopters or drones. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, well, the, the most important problem is related to legal issues. Indeed, you need uh, a license or a patent and stuff like that. Well, the fact is that we. Mm, we are providing a drone which is automatic and not autonomous. Being autonomous means that you don't have any control in the drone and instead being automatic means that you can actually stop the flight of the drone whenever you want. So you just need the patent, you know, the license for, for flying it. So this means that uh, there should be a person watching the, the drone flying uh, sometimes. <laughs> okay, thank you. More questions? Thank you. Um, what was the most difficult part of the challenge? I mean, uh, like uh, uh, work together or uh, presenting your ideas? Well, uh, wor working together was amazing. I mean, I, I think that uh, we I had, I had the opportunity of meeting a great team and I, I really think that working together wasn't so difficult. Well, the most difficult thing was related, uh, at, I mean, I'm working on the IT side. I think that the most difficult thing was related to the development of the artificial intelligence of the drone. You know, being precise in the landing is kind of 
quite difficult because those drones are not very powerful and not very efficient in the landing. So, and not only, not only in the landing, but also while they are overing, so, you know, they tend to move and not so... That's so technical. The technical one. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Another question? Yeah. Wow. How many crows did you crash? <laughs> well, well, that, that's a good question, but... It's not related to the drones, but related to the propellers we've broken. <laughs> How many? <laughs> I have a disclosure agreement. <laughs> Big applause, guys. Thanks. Okay, kids, five minutes break. Get a beer, go to the toilet, leave a donation, and we go back here with the other three presentations. We are now the
Because he tried to merge the whole project yeah. into his slides. <laughs> yeah, so if you develop in Java and you want to read the slides, oh. we have like some... Who said who Java? Be nice, he's our guest, please. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Huh? He is saying who Java. Yeah, actually the presentation is about it. But, uh, yeah, so we have some free seats on the first row, so don't be shy. He's very nice, I guess. He doesn't buy so, it. Yeah. Yet. No, okay. Uh, all of our slides and the material, I saw some people taking pictures of the slides or the presenters because they want to hire you. But no, anyway, uh, all the slides and the material will be on our website at specand.tech in uh, a couple of days. So uh, even if you cannot follow the code but you get at least the idea or the concept behind, it should be pretty okay. But if you're interested in uh, very, very interested in the code, just come closer. And now the word to our friend uh, Luca. Thank you so much. Well, uh, let's begin. Who, uh, who am I? Yeah, I'm a Java developer, JavaScript developer, uh, point performer, uh, mountain biker, fan of Blade Runner, and etc. 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 And I'm a food in the eater, and I'm a page lover. Well, I wish. <laughs> then, we're talking about the seven things of Java. So we start with last. If you want to be bad, you gotta be good. So, what does it mean? So, we got an instance of uh, an implemented class in Java, and it's very bloated, very heavy, very verbose. So, what's the problem? Well, uh, why public visibility is not by default? Uh, why we need to define uh, finals inside of the class? Uh, uh, I don't like annotation at all, and uh, casting, the, the casting style is stuck in the 1980s. So we got done uh, the wrong time now checking. Methods are too long to write. So, but then we got Kotlin, uh, a general language developed by JetBrains. Uh, who knows JetBrains and Kotlin? Uh, wonderful. They're all sponsors. Oh, great. So, yeah, okay. So, how to fix that? Just use the Kotlin, of course. Uh, so, talk me pleasantly. So, we can define the same class in a very short way. Then, uh, what the, the pros of the, of the language? Well, public and finite class are by default. Always know when 
value is nullable and uh, we can define an align method. So we can forget, forget about semicolon and the starting methods and a new keyword as well for constructor. Just call it uh, as is. Then, lambda expression and first class citizen in the language. We get type alias and so awesome. Then another kind of thing, well, pretty hidden uh, there, but there is a out keyword that uh, is a part of the new generic systems uh, in Kotlin. It will take too long to explain it. Maybe next time. So, uh, then we got the next scene. Gluttony. Stuck methods. Uh, well, the newbies uh, of, Java, of Java love stuck methods. Mm, stuck methods are all around uh, in their code. And it's a very bad habit. So, it's an ugly procedural style, it's a code smell, it's a then you have to define the static methods inside of the class or interfaces, um, which are named the badly or silly, and lead a ton of uh, duplicated code, and there is no use case uh, around uh, the static method, it's just a helper. Uh, and it's hard to understand uh, where it's used. So, how to fix that in Kotlin? Extension methods. How good it is that? So, array is an object, so let's use it in that way. So, for instance, you can uh, define a method around the array object. And uh, mm, by uh, knowing the key's internal state, its internal state, we can uh, use that for um, implement other kind of methods around the object. So, with a single dot we can know if something is already implemented without seek for a particular method through every single package to find that particular something you use class or interface. It's self-documented. So, I found the max number, yeah, we got this uh, example about the max number inside of an array, I find that the max number in the array you're actually using. Not any known array, array which I don't know where it comes from. So, pretty useful. Next, scene uh, cupidity, conservative tradition. We got a lot of syntax uh, inherited by um, a very old API and syntax of Java. Uh, to write that class, uh, I had mm, uh, I needed a couple of minutes to properties, and then I had to write four methods in order to access uh, access them. Before Java seven has been proposed that the property syntax, but it was rejected. Why? Any printable implementation, since we got an interface uh, on the top of this code. Uh, any printable implementation must handle your exception since we got uh, a definition uh, of print that throws an I.O. exception. Each interface uh, or class, uh, for each interface uh, or class we have to uh, create a file for public ones. Primary constructors with uh, dependence injection are not standard. Still possible to define abstract interface. What the heck is that? The abstract interface was a very ancient syntax of Java 1. I mean, Java 1 was released in 1996, pretty old, and it's still there. <laughs> so, how to fix that? Progressive legacy interface printable and from print in Kotlin and just that. And here, we got a, with a couple of uh, lines of code, we define the same class as before. Less than five seconds to write. Properties are obligatory. Um, in order to implement, we got the column inspired by C++ and C sharp. All exceptions are unchecked, so you don't need to check it, uh, to catch it. Everything can be defined in one single file. By default, all classes are closed for modification and open for extendability. Bad inheritance boy, you are a bad, bad boy. 
So, next scene, sorrow, java beans. Java beans was a pattern introduced in 2000 uh, with Java 1.3. You, uh, in order to define just a C structure, okay, sorry, uh, okay, your C structure, you have to define uh, that blooded code. So I need to be faster, sorry. So how to uh, fix that? Uh, in Kotlin, just a couple of, couple of lines, uh, still a couple of lines of code with a data class. And data class is a syntax inspired by Scala, implicit the implementation of properties again. Property, uh, primary constructor is the only constructor you actually need. Uh, you can define yours, but you are forced to call the primary one, etc. So, next one. Pride. No pointer exception. What the hell, no pointer exception? Uh, we got no pointers in Java. Why? Uh, it's so C++ plus plus or 2 or Pascal 7. So, I can express a quality field instead inside of my class. You can actually. They are all nullable. Uh, or you can use uh, annotation. Well, I forgot to say don't. So, how is to the rescue in Kotlin? Uh, Double class, you can define uh, required, um, required fields and it's all uh, now safe. And, uh, we have we can handle all the nullable um, fields with the uh, Elvis operator. So if now check uh, fail, if not now check fails, uh, no now will be returned uh, return immediately and uh, no no pointer exception. Rat check check it and then check it exception. What is a check it exception in Java? An exception that extends Java language exception. Interrupt exception, for instance, is a checked exception. Unchecked exception, an exception because that extends Java language runtime exception. The legal argument exception is unchecked. How to handle them? Well, you don't know in Kotlin. There is no checked exception in Kotlin. Throw keyword, for instance, have a different meaning, which is a type of name nothing if an if a exception is created. Nothing said, if I'm referring the runtime flow stops. So, final scene, slot. Java is uh, enterprise or community driven. Well, we need to check the pros and cons of uh, the language. Huge ecosystem is the first language in the world, basically. Nelly before Oracle. Open to decay, free and open. JQM rocks more than ever. Then comes Oracle. Uh, no one uses actually Java Enterprise uh, in the big players. Oracle JDK is not totally for free. Uh, it's enterprise driven mostly. Java 9 has been delayed uh, three times. What about coupling? Well, Java interoperability is awesome. Uh, mix object-oriented paradigms with functional paradigms. It uh, has been adopted by Pivotal and Google. So, who, yeah, in the developing uh, Android is perfect. It's community-driven. And just take one hour to learn. It's pretty easy. Functional paradigms uh, is not for all. Uh, you need to learn that kind of functional programming and stuff. Uh, they can be a lock in, so because of uh, the brains, you know? And then, yeah, community driven is another uh, concept. Why? Because the community wants all, all, all the fancy things and the crazy stuff uh, instead of the language. Now uh, look at for instance, C sharp is just a blood syntax. And uh, then, uh, what about progression? It's very fast progression. Can you keep up? We don't know. Uh, we see in the future. So, this was the, my last uh, slide. And sorry about the code uh, because it was a riddle. But if you need it, uh, just ask me and I will provide it.
Thank you. See you folks. As I said, all the code will be uh, on our website in the upcoming days, so you can read and spoof and whatever. We will have uh, his contacts so you can get in touch with him anytime. Any question on this before we move on? Not to move it faster than ever, but uh, we run a bit late on this presentation. Uh, what will happen when uh, Java will release new versions? So we Kotlin need to stay up to date. Oh, uh, you mean about the APIs or the syntax? Uh, uh, yes, APIs, most of all. Well, yes, uh, they usually, mm, every time you tell them well, uh, actually, no, they don't have any to do anything. Since uh, um, Java interoperability, you can use all the APIs uh, by default. Uh, and uh, there is no particular issue about it. I mean, if, if Java, if Oracle extends Java language, Kotlin will not support that extension. They will need to be well uh, under the uh, well under the hood. You mean uh, since uh, Kotlin is then uh, compiled in Java itself, uh, the only thing that matters is bytecode. Uh, so um, the, the point is, I won't be able to use a new feature in Kotlin until Kotlin gets updated. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. It's a yeah, maybe. It's an awesome question. <laughs> Let's, move it. Let's move it later. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry for breaking the, the scene. Yeah. Oh, well, we went back again. again. Also, thank you very much. <laughs> you can ask all the questions you need after the other talks. You can really, you probably tried to merge uh, in seven minutes at a talk that was uh, probably half an hour long. Good. Yeah, but if you but want to talk time. more in depth about this, we are super happy yeah. to host yeah. you next time. Oh, yeah. Please, yeah. please do. Okay, uh, Kotlin is awesome, so please. Uh, Julia has a very important thing to say. Yeah, so, uh, basically, JetBrains, who, uh, who about you knows about JetBrains? No, we already had this question before, sorry. I was joking. So, JetBrains is sponsoring the event. They are super, super nice. And they are giving away like stickers that Michaela has, and you can take a swag for free. But more important, they are giving away free licenses at every event. Woo! And for this event, we have decided a winner. How we decided a winner? Since Spec and Tech is super expensive because France decided to turn in an association, which is nonsense, guys, it's super expensive. <laughs> but he's the serious guy, and, and I'm not sure that that's the, how, how, how the world runs. So we, are, uh, we, we decided be, between all the people who donated on this very night, a super lucky winner of the license of JetBrains. So please, let's make some atmosphere like, oh, oh. oh. more fun. Oh. Yeah, all right, almost. It's not that interesting as JetBrains license, I guess. And this are more, oh, oh. So, come on, guys. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. And the winner for the JetBrains license is Andrea Lopardi. Woo! Oh. Where are you, please? Leonardi, yes, Notre Party. Yeah. There is a guy here called Andrea Party. Yeah, so please. Congrats. Wanna say a couple of words? Yeah. So what did we? Okay, thank you very much. Really, really, we're super late and I'm very hungry, so... <laughs> no, uh, it's for the whole suite of judgment. Tell us about your experience as Spectre Tech. First time? Yeah, uh, first time, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, beginners lucky or something? Beginners lucky? Thank you. Good luck, cheers. <laughs> Okay, so we have a winner that comes for the first time in uh, Spec and Tech, guys. You should probably talk to him later about this uh, very important uh, characteristics he has named as. Okay, final two talks tonight. Dimitro, actually. Okay. Seven minutes, remember? Ali? Thanks, Julia. Don't worry, we're not trying to put pressure on you. All right. Uh, how many? How many of you are freelancers? 
Okay, how many of you have ever tried to do a project for a client or a friend, whatever, at least once in a life? Doing something wrong. Okay, almost everyone. <clears throat> um, I am a freelancer. My name is Dima. Uh, I run a web agency. Uh, we create websites for clients on the freelance market. So our clients are all over the world. Hence, all of our project communication is done online. Um, what was supposed to say here? <laughs> all right. Uh, when the client comes uh, with the task for me, let's say a client wants to build a website. Uh, first, we discuss the main parts of the job, like what will be done next, and we start going deeper into details. I ask them questions. Uh, they answer, they ask more questions, and answer back. In the end, it becomes a mess. It's tough to control. And if you want, uh, yeah. And so far, it's working kind of in this way. This is an email with tons of points, uh, details, and comments about every single detail that a uh, client wanted to tell me. Or, it can be threads or uh, swim lanes in Trello, but as long as you have many of them, it becomes very hard to navigate. Or, if you use Google Docs, sometimes it can go really wild. <laughs> you need to use it, but then this was just a two weeks project with only four people, you can see all sorts of different colors, notes, who re wrote that, when we wrote that, decisions, headings, whatever. So it's crazy, and you cannot do much about it. So, um, existing tools, you can use them. You can use these kind of tools, and you can do this job. But it is really tough to do it in this way. Um, if you, okay, it's not changing, but, yeah. And if you want to be successful in this, you need to plan what to communicate next. You need to communicate it over the web and always document the result while being sure that every important stakeholder confirmed every detail you're gonna implement. And, if you think about it, actually, the project discussion kind of has a structure. It has hierarchy. But there is not a single tool on the market that supports this kind of hierarchy. So we decided that we need to build one, and it's called Clarify Me. It's an online platform that uh, assists you in project communication. Uh, it supports hierarchy. So you can easily navigate to any detail of your project very fast and easy. Uh, that's how you create new topic under certain level. I don't know if it has. Does it have this? No. Okay. <laughs> so uh, under certain uh, level of hierarchy, you create a new question. In this case, it's functionality, subscribe for newsletter, and I ask which user data to collect when uh, you subscribe to a newsletter on the website. Uh, then I set stakeholders, people who are responsible. Sometimes it can be marketing department of your client, it can be developer, it can be boss. Uh, so you set all of the people who are responsible for these decisions. Then all of these people can discuss what needs to be built. In the end, you create a suggested decision and you suggest stakeholders to confirm it. So there is a mechanism that allows you to approve every single decision. It serves as a sign on contract. So this is how you are sure that everything you decided to do is what your client confirmed. Uh, then uh, it lets you be free of uh, planning. Uh, instead of uh, writing down that you need to write to a designer to respond about logo and stuff and remember as a project manager that all of the people need to tell their opinion about a certain part of the project. 
everyone knows uh, that they either answer and waiting for other people to answer, or they are uh, or there are questions that are waiting for their answer, and it is done through notifications. So it is done automatically. You don't need to plan it. And in the end, after all of the details are confirmed, uh, it automatically generates project documentation. So you can just export it, print it, sign it, and it's a real contact, and you don't need to create it manually as you should have done before. So this tool would solve most of the most important uh, problems that I have in project communication for me. Uh, I'm not the only one. This is stats from 2014. Only in Europe, India, and USA, there are 87 million of freelancers. This market is huge and it keeps growing as the world moves towards shared economy and dynamic workforce. And yeah, uh, sometimes, uh, people often ask us, how come there is not a single tool on the market that does this? Have they started and failed or like, is it something so unique or stupid? Why there is no one? So there kind of is. This is uh, germ.io. Uh, Startup by Indian developers started four years ago. This is an ideation tool. Uh, it allows you to discuss ideas in a hierarchical way, which already simplifies the process a lot. But it doesn't have the approval mechanism, it doesn't have uh, <clears throat> documentation generation, and it doesn't have any sort of notifications. So this doesn't serve our use case. And you can also use the uh, um, usual tools like uh, Trello, Google Docs, and uh, Slack, uh, based what? Jira. Jira, yeah. You could integrate them all together to uh, have this effect of combining planning, documentation, and communication together. But you need to learn, you need to decide how to do that. Uh, you cannot easily and seamlessly provide it to your client as a single place, you need to teach them how to use every single of that tools. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are aiming to build this tool. Very simple thing to make your communications stronger. So, uh, we have a website, it's there. Uh, there are some titles that are not right, I'm gonna update them tomorrow. Uh, but if you're interested, uh, leave your email there or subscribe to our Telegram channel. There is a button. And we will update you with every news. Thank you very much. Now talk to us, there is me and Ivan, co-founder. Talk to us and discuss it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super happy that he's talking tonight because like, he asked me like 30 minutes of questions, one of the previous Pack and Tech night. So if any of other people is starting projects inside Pack and Tech between other people, we are super happy to host you and make you like some, some ads or whatever. And left some impression and feedback from the other people. So question time now. So if any of you have some question for these nice guys, here's the moment. Otherwise, the last two. Questions? Who opened the website? Is there anyone who opened the website? No? Hello guys, Hello. that was really cool, but I mean, if I have a, a web agency or if I am a freelancer, how can I convince my clients to use that tool? Yeah, uh, we are striving to create the most simple interface to let your clients prefer this over emails and other tools. Uh, you can go on the website, you can open, there is a prototype with all of these screens that I showed you today, you can see them, and you can uh, check how, how it looks like. Uh, that's why we are coming here, uh, we are validating the thing, we are talking to clients, we are confirming that this is something they're gonna use. Uh, and we are constantly refining it in every iteration to make the design better. So, anyways, clients that want to create high quality projects, uh, products, they need to learn how to use something that simplifies the process. This is a small investment. There are very little tool, very little functionality that you need to learn. Small investment of time that gives huge boost to productivity. So, that's it. And Additionally, we're going to have uh, tutorials and videos, walkthroughs about how to use it, as well as a blog with 
like best use cases, best practices about how to do it for project management and communication. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay, final question, otherwise, uh, final talk. Come on, please open the website. Yeah. Tell, tell your friends. We, we need you to share this. Oh, you already closed the website. It's clarify-me.com. Final talk, you. Yeah, thanks again. Final talk from a guy here standing in the first row. Spoiler, he is not on Facebook. Yeah. Hello everybody, my name is Gian Vita, I'm 24, I'm a computer scientist from Bari. This is not going to be a technical talk, it is about sharing an idea, in particular my meta project, OPI. The acronym stands for one project per year, what is the, sorry. So, the acronym stands for one project per year. Um, as you can imagine, uh, I try to complete at least one personal project every year. And um, so, typical, traditionally, people search for legacy in their adulthood. In my case, it all began in boyhood. I can't explain why, but I always have a feeling, um, a deep urgency to complete projects, uh, reach goals, and somehow. Uh, left uh, a trace. Uh, we can let the story begin in uh, 2014. I decided to develop a simple responsive website. Uh, it was for an Afghan uh, breeder in Bari. Nothing special from a technical point of view, yet useful. I gained some experience with CSS and JavaScript. Um, I understand what I didn't want to do in my life, namely web development. I am a technical guy without it. And uh, last but not least, I save up a little money, I later spent for my Lego collection. <laughs> so, one step ahead, October 2015, a critical point of my life, I resigned from, uh, from my work, I decided to start studying again here in Trento. So, I uh, tidy up in my head, I write a gigantic wall of, wall of text on Facebook, a farewell post, and uh, I recognize that when it comes to my personal project, I tend to procrastinate, find excuses, complain about uh, insufficient time, so I needed more rigor, and uh, I devised OP as a, a way to keep myself committed and motivated. And uh, by the way, I can see the positive aspects of Facebook, it's just that I don't like the way it is changing our society and uh, its uh, misuse, especially in younger generations. So I quit Facebook, and to keep in touch with my university colleagues, I created a Telegram group, Am I the only one who sees that? It seems to me that Telegram groups or groups in general are becoming a sort of infectious disease. <laughs> People are scared by groups. They are happy when they can leave immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the contrary, I consider, I value some groups uh, an important asset. This one in particular, it is made up, it is made up of 20 people. Uh, we are carefree and uh, in the same way we collect bets on groundbreaking worldwide events on deep learning and we also post to stupid memes. And uh, broadly speaking, I believe this is also the way we should live our lives, uh, seriously. And uh, in this environment, I felt confident in sharing my, my document where uh, I collected all my ideas about OPI. Uh, my friends were enthusiasts, they embraced my meta project, they started their own. And uh, this is our latest reunion. So, next project, 50 weeks of TED. Basically, for over a year, I tried to, walk, to watch uh, as many TED Talks as possible. If you don't know what is TED, you can ask uh, Fata. In the end, uh, I watched uh, 140 40 Talks. It, they are 35 hours circa, still less than Game of Thrones, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. And uh, I have tweeted them all to keep a history, and I also managed to keep a rank. This is this was not easy. There is a bonus link in the last slide. And in between, I've also participated to three live events, two here in Trento, one in Milan. And uh, I have successfully engaged my friends, and most of all, some of them found the project interesting enough to keep it running. So, there. Very simple. I, every, the first day of every month, I uh, shut down my phone and I still do it. 
uh, I had discovered the pleasure and the joy of living without a phone while I was working in Paris. And uh, this is a way to detoxify myself. We are all addicted to technologies. And uh, the positive consequences of this project have been vastly superior than I expected. Uh, I have rediscovered the many, many old time beautiful things, such as no alarm clock, no time, uh, asking information to strangers, mental efforts to remember things, and conversations. Conversations while eating, conversations while traveling, conversation about TED Talks. This is a recent conversation I had on, uh, on Yoda, I suppose you know. Uh, okay, there, there's these guys describing how the sense of likeness he experienced while being without phone, so I suggested him to try the day off, and the 1st of July we will see what will happen. There is a bonus looking yet. So, Nerdes. I live in Nest, it's an old residence uh, uh, in Trento Norden. It's a, a place I love for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is the great freedom we have to hold events. I am co-founder of Nerdest. It is a, a club of nerd people, we are 40-50. And uh, we organize <coughs> weekly events since uh, last year's April. Uh, we have shared many unforgettable moments together. And this is a non-trivial thing if you consider we are now. And <laughs> so, we have watched together night and day TV series, anime, movies. We have played together, card games, board games, role play games, video games. And uh, uh, most of all, we have tried to, uh, to share our passions with the not yet nerd people. Um, we, here you can see Stefano, he's one of my friends. Before knowing me, he would have never thought about buying manga and uh, MDHL. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is uh, Luca Comics and Games, 2016, one of his childhood dreams. And uh, here you can see him taking his first Japanese uh, uh, telegram lessons online with Asako, a friend of mine. And this is a picture of uh, last Monday, his luggage. You can see uh, Japanese dictionary, manga, Japanese books, and so on. And this guy is one of my greatest victory. <laughs> <laughs> so the last project is about uh, brotherhood, and uh, in particular on how I am reconnected with uh, my brothers. After two years away from home, I felt like our relationship was getting weaker, and this was unacceptable. So I had to find a trick, uh, a trick to reconnect with him, and the trick was trying to achieve our childhood dreams and complete our Pokemon card collection. We started in 1999, when I was six and he was four. So, this is a story about eBay auction one at night, a continuous stream of packages coming from the post office, and tedious work like cutting 1,000 um, adhesive corners to put the cards on the frame. And uh, it is also a story about friendship, and nothing of this would have been possible without uh, friends, like Lorenzo and Mirko or Nerdest, gifting us with their cards. And uh, of course we had many technical problems, Scyther fell down, and uh, I had to rearrange my, uh, my bouquets, uh, because the frame was too big. So this is uh, with me with my aunt, with my uncle. Uh, Easter Monday, 7 a.m. <laughs> my, my brother was very happy. So here there is one missing picture, and it is the one with me and my brother, happy, kneel down at the two corners of the, of the frame. I can't wait to come back home in July, since I still haven't seen the final result on the wall. And that's it. So. So the lesson learned, live your life to the fullest, uh, do what you love, do it immediately, don't find excuses, and most of all, resonate with people, away from, uh, away from keyboard. Social media are bullshit. Can I say bullshit? Children are sleeping. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, guys.
I think in social media is bullshit because we wouldn't be here if social media. Okay, thank you for your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we have all the questions now. No, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> At least once per month they are bullshit. No. No, I think it's important. Like an, an environment like this, like Spec and Tech, is boring online. Like we cannot say it's bullshit. So you're right. It's good to compensate. No, we don't find the right kind of info. Go away, please. <laughs> We have a question from the very back to the other. So, how did you get to know Spec and Tech without social media, without being on Facebook? Uh -huh. Telegram? I am a computer scientist and uh, of course I recognize uh, the value of social media and uh, as I said before... Uh, no, no, this is why. There, there he asked people. how. <laughs> uh, you know, you can, you can talk with people. <laughs> Otherwise, okay, if you take a look at your phone, see if you're subscribed to our Telegram channel on those things called social media, um, there is a very, 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 very short uh, um, survey of two questions. The first one will tell you who's going to be the winner of tonight. We, you listen to six talks. What's the coolest one? Who would you vote for? What do you think is the nicest idea of the night? What do you would listen for, for like, Hours. What do you like? What do you the most? Yeah, please don't vote for Francesco. Yeah, I mean, I'm not one of those six. And uh, the second one is, uh, did you like this format of having six talk of seven minutes instead of having two talks of half an hour? I know everyone will say yeah, half an hour is too long or whatever, but I think it's also good to compensate and to have uh, your voice. So if you just go on Telegram, it takes very two seconds. And um, any other question? The next round of applause! Woo. Yeah, was, okay, uh, one thing we can have to remind you of is that uh, we will draft a winner for the... Um, what's the name of the development thing? Uh, Jet, Jet Brains. Okay, we will draft a winner of Jet Brains every single event. So if you attend our events and you want to win a, a very cool pack of... Uh, uh, license for the pro version of uh, Jet Brains as our friend there, first time at Spec and Tech. Just uh, come and uh, donate uh, one cent and you will be uh, uh, eligible. Okay, not one cent, one euro, it's, uh, it's enough, but anyway. Um, and excluding this, uh, I would say it's almost done. Yeah, we're good to go. So, uh, if you please mind, please take the chairs from the other chairs, uh, because yeah. otherwise I have more work to do and I'm very, very lazy, so please help. So we are now stuck in the chair show together. Please yeah. stand up, pile them up, pile them up, pile them up, them up. all the similar chairs one on top of the others. <laughs> then try to move on this direction, and in the meantime we will bring you the spec and the piercing ready for. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful moment.